And we are back here with Paige Pierce. A couple of weekends ago, winning the OTB Open and the defending champion of the Portland Open last year. Paige, how does it feel coming into the second annual Portland Open here at Glendevere? Yeah, it feels great. I mean, Portland's one of my favorite cities in the United States, so it's always awesome to be back. I mean, look at this backdrop behind us. It's just luscious green grass and these giant, giant trees. So it really shows you the flight of the disc when the trees are just towering over these giant Anheuser. So it's a special place to play disc golf and a special place just to be in general. So I'm very excited. And the other course for this weekend's event is at Blue Lake Park. You've played a couple of majors, possibly even an NT there. Can you give us a little bit of reflection on how you feel about Blue Lake Park? Yeah, Blue Lake is is a great park. I think, you know, you've seen some playoffs there in the past. You've seen uh, a lot of close battles. Um, Katrina's first world title was there. The Paul and Ricky battle, um, you know, Eagle and Drew and Nate Perkins battled it out last year or what, maybe two years ago, maybe. So anyway, there's been lots of awesome battles. So it's been a, a prestigious course or just like a historic course in disc golf. So I'm excited to get back out there and, you know, try to put my name in disc golf history on, on a course that already has so much history. And uh, just really quick, one more thing. We heard that you had a birthday yesterday. Can you tell us a little bit about how the champ celebrates a birthday? I did have a birthday yesterday. It's my golden birthday, 31 years old now. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we had a great day. I was actually home in Florida. I had some flight troubles, so I ended up rerouting myself back to Florida. Um, and yeah, I had a great day. I just rolled in today. So I actually have to admit, I thought the tournament started tomorrow. So rookie mistake. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, either way, I'm very excited that I got to spend my birthday at home. And uh, we had a nice sunrise at the beach, at the dog beach with our puppies. And just a relaxing day before I get back into the tournament swing of things. I have so many tournaments coming up. I think I just heard you talk to Jeff Spring and he said it was ha halfway through the year is this event. So, um, you know, knowing the second half of the tour is really where it kicks up and all, you know, three out of our four majors are in the final half of the year and uh, lots of our playoff events. So, uh, yeah, I had a great birthday. Sorry, I got off track. I'm, I'm, I'm off birthday mode now, and I'm back to disc golf mode. I keep staring back behind me, and I, I got to get through this press conference so I can go through. <laughs> hey, Paige, Grant's owner, PDGA. A couple of weeks ago, you were really pushed at OTB, uh, an event that came down to the last couple of holes. That has to take a lot out of the tank, both mentally and physically. Now this week, four rounds, four uh, walks on very long courses. So how did you recharge during your week off? Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of just talked about that a little bit. I got to go home and just have some relaxing time. Um, it's nice to go home because you you stop being Paige Pierce for a little bit. You're just like living, living life, you know, doing dishes and taking the trash out. Oh, today's trash day. I got to text Alyssa, but, um, uh, you know, things like that. Like I literally go to my kitchen and I turn on the faucet and water comes out. Like that is things that we take for granted. Like, have you even thought about that at home? Have you thought about how magical that is that you just have ever flowing water as long as you pay your bill? Um, cause in, in van life, you don't have that. So it's nice to take a step off of the tour for, you know, these, you know, four days at a time, five days at a time and to just have that balance of the work-life balance. It's been so something I didn't know I needed. Um, and it's, it's, I just feel so refreshed and like eager. I think that's the best part about it is I, I'm sitting here like shaking my foot, like itching to go throw discs. So that I think of, of everything, uh, I think that's the best thing that has come from it as far as my career goes, is just how eager it's making me. Did you touch a disc at all during the course of the last oh, yeah. two weeks? Oh yeah, Did definitely. Do you feel the need to work on any part of your game during your off time? Um, you know, I feel it strongly every week now because of the ever rising co competition. I mean, uh, like you said, I got pushed very hard at OTB Open, and um, you know, especially when I wasn't even playing bad. You know, I was taking pars. I took a, a uh, I did take a bogey on hole 11, but after that, I didn't take another bogey. So um, you know, to have my closest competitor in Natalie Ryan chase me down uh on a birdie streak that's that goes to show you like hey you gotta put some time in and so yeah I mean also with that in mind it's just like I 
I want to keep living those battles. I want to keep giving the fans of disc golf these epic battles that go down in history, like the Paul Ricky battle. And um, yeah, so definitely I, I had a lot of practice putting sessions in my backyard, which is my favorite place to, to putt because again, you don't have to be Paige Pierce. You don't have to go find a course that's less populated and find a basket where nobody's at. You can just go in your backyard and, and putt and nobody's calling your name or anything like that. So yeah. I, I have a f great time at home practicing. That's probably my favorite place that I've ever, ever practiced. So, yeah. So half of this event at Blue Lake, which you know, the other two rounds here at Glendivere, you haven't seen yet. You're getting ready to go out and see it for the first time. With limited prep time, what will you focus on as you make mental notes for later on in the week? Um, well, when I found out that the tournament started tomorrow, um, I knew that I would just have this one afternoon to prep before the tournament started. And the first two rounds being at Blue Lake, I'm gonna head straight from here to Blue Lake. I'll have like seven hours before the sun goes down. So um, play one full round. If I need to go see any other holes, I'll go back to them and just get one more rep in on those holes. And then I'm not gonna actually play Glendivere until after my first round because the courses are available to be practiced um, both tomorrow and Friday, um, since we don't come over here till Saturday. That gives me two days of practice. It's just going to test my endurance. Um, and even though I'm 31 now, I feel very um, athletic. I feel, I, I you know, yeah, now you get a little bit of back pain if you sleep on the floor or an air mattress, but you know, I feel like my body's in tip top condition and I've been in a, I've been in a, I, I guess good fortune over my career. I haven't had any injury that has put me out of a tournament. So, um, you know, just, uh, just trusting my body and knowing that, hey, I can make it through two rounds Back when I first started touring, we used to play two rounds in a day every day. At Worlds, we used to play seven to eight rounds. So I can do it. Um, it's just going to be something where I need to take out a notebook because when you're practicing 36 holes at one time, they can blend together. So uh, I think it's just going to be a matter of being really, really intentional and deliberate with my practice. Good stuff. Thank you, Paige. Hello, Paige. Hello, Brian. You know, you spoiled one of my surprises before you sat down. You found the disc that I was going to present to you for the first <laughs> question. Um, I still think it's extremely relevant to talk about, especially you just turned 31 a decade ago. This disc that I had prepared for you was made. It was here. Let me give it to you. Toss it. Yep. I, I'm i sorry I ruined your surprises. No, it's when okay. You see a, if you're a disc golfer, when you see a disc, you have to touch it. I understand. It was my fault for placing it in the wrong place. Yeah. But this is a 2012, 2012. Paige Pierce uh, fundraiser disc on a Buzz SS when you were touring with Eric McCabe. It was yep. a year after you had won your world championship in Santa Cruz, I believe, correct? In yes. 2011. Let's abstract a little bit. Talk about the world champion's skill set in 2011, Paige Pierce. Whoa. And now we're over a decade later. You just turned 31. What is the skill set like for you now compared to when you won your first title? Yeah, I mean, when I first when I won my first world title, uh, it's funny. Hole 18, I threw a sidearm on the tee shot, and I threw it every round. But I remember specifically in that final round, hearing people say like, "Oh my gosh!" and the interviews after, like, "Wow, you you threw a sidearm on the last hole. Like, we never have seen you throw a sidearm before." Um, so it was kind of like a one shot, one trick pony kind of thing, you know? And at this place in the game, I still very much so rely on backhands, but you know, on courses like this or in Stockton, I mean, I busted out maybe like five or six sidearms, a couple rollers, even rollers on par threes and stuff like that. Um, you know, you're having to throw like distance sky and hyzer shots, like hyzer flip ups. So um, yeah, I think the amount of shots that you have to have in your bag have increased tremendously. And so, you know, when you're doing field work, you, you need to make sure to try out these new discs and these new lines, but you have to remember to not neglect your, your power horses. So that's been the biggest change I would say is how much more time you need practicing and doing field work. Perfect. Well, I'm not going to hold you anymore. There's a lot of disc <laughs> golf you need to be playing now that you just got into town. So good luck this week. Thank Paige. you very much.